Yes, guys, we are back. We are back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Big up to every single one of you. I hope you guys have enjoyed the international break or the peace that surrounds the international break because it's been relatively quiet from a Chelsea front. We've heard some rumblings about Nkunku being unsettled, but other than that, it's been a little bit dead over the last few days. So I've taken the opportunity to unwind. That's why you guys haven't seen a lot of me in the last few days because it's the final international break of the year. It's the last international break until March. We're going to be head down just doing content on the daily from next week onwards. So might as well just enjoy the break while it's here, innit? You don't get a lot of opportunities to do it when you're doing content creation. So we're here. We're relaxing. We're unwinding. But we're still delivering semi-regular content. We will be live tomorrow as well. Live streams will be back tomorrow. So keep a lookout for that. But yeah, for this week, we've just been chilling. But I've seen a narrative arising over the last, I say week, last couple weeks. And I thought, you know what? This is the perfect time to drop another Carefree Reacts and let's do some debunking. So we're going to debunk the myth that Cole Palmer doesn't turn up in big games. We're going to debunk the myth that Cole Palmer is a flat track bully and doesn't turn up when the bigger opposition come round because this is such a BS narrative that I've only seen doing the rounds this season. And hell, I've only seen it doing the rounds over the last month. Because guess what? For the first time since Cole Palmer's joined Chelsea, you could argue that he's having a rough patch, which is only taken him a year. A year where he came into the club as a Manchester City prospect. A lot of question marks over, why are we spending $45 million for a City bench warmer? We, we need experience. We need a leader. We need someone who's going to drag these young players forwards. We don't have anybody that's going to stand up for this club or anything like that. And it's been Cole Palmer. We've seen everything that Cole Palmer has achieved this season. This guy has won England Player of the Year. This guy has won... Premier League Young Player of the Year. This guy has won PFA Pl Young Player of the Year. This guy has won um, numerous Man of the Match awards in big games as well. But because of a one-month patch of form, which we can also debunk as well. We're going to delve into this season's form too. But because of that one little patch of form, we're now saying that Cole Palmer doesn't turn up in big games. And I am here to debunk this absolute BS. First off, you don't get the second highest goal involvement in the last year for nothing. For nothing. Without turning up and getting GNA in the big games as well. But we are going to delve into it on a game-by-game -game basis. And it's funny that this has mainly come out from the Chelsea-Arsenal game. Oh, Cole Palmer didn't show up in the big game again. Cole Palmer didn't turn up against Arsenal again. People running this narrative like he literally didn't play in the 5-0 because he was injured. Like You lot remember my title for the preview with Lee and Northside for that game. No Palmer, no Gusto, no hope. Because <laughs> no Barber, and you're like, you think I, I think we're going to do anything in that game. Get in the bin. But let's talk about the last time he played Arsenal at the Emirates. Oh, oh, a man of the match. There you are. There you are. And he wasn't even playing on the right in that game. This man was playing in a false nine. This man was playing in a false nine in that game. Still bagged the penalty. Still dominated the Arsenal midfield, who surprisingly didn't turn up in that game. Like The only decent midfielder I think that they had in that game was probably Jorginho. Jorginho. Rice only really turned up in the second half. First half, he was as meaty as everybody else. But that is only the Arsenal game. How about we talk about, um, what's the next one? Manchester City, seeing as he did come from Manchester City. Let's talk about Man City. Oh, wait, another man of the match. Another man of the match. There you are. This man's link up with Rhys James on the right-hand side in this game was sensational. It was impeccable. It was unbelievable. And it was just another game in his rise to becoming the face of this football club. because. Again, you're playing your former club. Talk about a big game individually for you as a person, as well as for the team, because we were struggling around that period. We are wallowing in mid-table. 
And Cole Palmer was looking like one of the few rays of hope when there was barely any rays of hope. Another example of a man stepping up for the big occasion. Tottenham, another man of the match. This time it was at home. In the away game as well, we remember the 4-1 match. That was one of the dumbest games of football I've ever seen in my life. Nicholas Jackson bagged a hat-trick and somehow his prop went down after that game. But I remember when we went 2-1 up. It took us ages to get to that point, by the way. And I remember our manager, Maurizio Pochettino, telling us to hold on to the lead. I saw players trying to retain possession against a nine-man Spurs playing a high line. Do you know how furious I was in that away end? But do you know who said, bun that, I'm going to hoof the ball forwards? Cole Palmer. And he hoofed it forward one time. He got the ball to Gallagher. Gallagher found Jackson 3-1. He did it again, found Nicholas Jackson 4-1. Like. All I needed was someone to have the intent to move the ball forwards because everybody else was doing the sideways backwards thing and it was driving me nuts. Spurs were there for the taking and we were so shook after going 2-1 up. Our manager didn't want us to attack anymore against a nine-man high line. Thank God Cole Palmer saw better than that. Thank the Lord. Newcastle, because these men were competing for top four as well at the time. I'm going to be shameless and I'm going to add them into that. Newcastle. Another man of the match. There you are. Another man of the match for him. And then, just to add to that one, just to add to that one, you know what we're going to do? Show you Cole Palmer against Newcastle this season. Another man of the match. There you are. There you are. Because, again, Cole Palmer doesn't turn up in big games. We all had Newcastle as a top four contender, and he turned up again. Here we are. Here we are. Manchester City, again, I didn't even mention the the semi-final. I didn't even mention the semi-final in that game because he made a lot of good chances for Nicholas Jackson that got ruined and also kind of should have had a penalty in that game as well. Thank you to VAR for VARing, as always. Well, so the only team that you kind of struggle to think of memories is Liverpool. Now, you could say Cole Palmer don't like playing at Anfield. Fair enough. That's a narrative I can understand. But the Carabao Cup final, He played really well. He created a lot of chances. One for Gallagher that hit the post. Another one for Gallagher that he fumbled one-on-one with the keeper. Creates another chance for Nkunku. Had that saved as well. But we're going to act like Cole Palmer don't turn up in the big games. And also, Manchester United. Do I even bother? Do I even bother trying to explain this one? Garnacho man of the match in the 94th minute. Cole Palmer man of the match in the 100th and one minute. And he got a hat trick in that time. But he don't turn up in the big games. This is a narrative that has only come out based off this season. And even when it's this season, we can debunk it. We can easily debunk it. It is very simple. Manchester City, poor game. He had about, what, 30 minutes of preseason? His only minutes were the week before against Inter Milan. Him starting, if he did start, was baffling in itself. And yeah, he was never going to be at full sharpness for that match. Next week, he went and got four goals and assists against Wolves. So all he needed was an extra week and also some terrible Wolves tactics in the second half. But Wolves don't count as a big game, so we're going to keep it stepping. Liverpool, there's no excuse for that one. No excuse. That one is probably his worst ever performance in a Chelsea shirt. Because he was at, he was playing in a position that he's comfortable in. And when he was in possession, he struggled. He completely struggled. Like, yeah, it, it was a very uncharacteristically bad performance for Cole Palmer against Liverpool. So for that one, I don't have any excuses for that one. That was poor. Now, Manchester United and Arsenal... We put him in a new position. We've started playing him predominantly on the left-hand side, which is a decision made bu- made from the manager. A decision I, I don't really agree with because I don't really understand it and I don't think it's getting the best out of him as a player. But you're clearly seeing the results of it because he's not really effective in anything other than building up play. And he said himself, he's learning the new role. He's understanding the roles and responsibilities of playing on the left-hand side. But until then, he ain't going to be the same Cole Palmer. And it's also coincided with a tougher run of fixtures. So I don't even think that's fair to judge him in that right either. 
but that is where the narrative of Cole Palmer and turning up in big games has risen from. It's just from this patch of games. And it's really, really tiring to try and explain this crap away. That's why I'm doing this in one video. So hopefully people never ask me again about this BS narrative of Cole Palmer. And does he turn up in big games or is he a flat track bully? Have you overrated him? No, I haven't. A month ago, it was not an unpopular opinion at all to say that Cole Palmer is the best player in the league. Now it is because he's had a bad patch of form. He still is one of the best players in the league just not being played in his best role. You could argue that Salah has eclipsed him over the last month, and I completely understand that. Shout out to Mo Salah. He has been cooking. He has a completely fair argument to be the Premier League's player of the season so far, and I completely get it. But that doesn't mean Cole Palmer's overrated. It doesn't mean Cole Palmer's a bum. It doesn't mean he's a flat-track bully. It doesn't mean that he doesn't turn up in big games. None of that crap. None of that crap. We're not listening to any of it. Ultimately, Palmer is just a bit of a victim of being put in a new role over the last month. And that's it. And because the month before, a lot of us fans were doing player of the season prop. They're now trying to criticize him with the exact same vim. And I get it. When you're the best player in the league, there is more expectation. There is more responsibility. But... It's also really not that deep after a one month to be saying that he's that bad and he's that overrated. So we ain't doing none of that. We ain't doing none of that. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Big up to every single one of you that's locked in. Do you believe that Cole Palmer doesn't turn up in big games? And if you do, let us know why in the description. And until then, take care. Big up everybody. Like, subscribe, all of that crap. Up the chels. Up the chels.